Okay, uh, I am here uh, with Dr. Eva Acosta from the University of Santiago de Compostela. Uh, Dr. Acosta, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, we are connected via Daewoo Kim. Um, so your work is primarily in visual optics, and we're going to get into that, but can you just tell me how you got into optics in general? Well, I, my background is in physics. I make theoretical physics. But when I ended the graduate studies, I, I was in love with laser applications in medicine. So I entered in the optics department where they put me directly in theoretical field <laughs> of telecommunication. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but anyway, I love that. So I, I worked during a long time in, in optical communications. And in fact, I made my, my postdoc in, in Japan in optical communication. Okay. And then after my postdoc, when I come back to, to Spain, well, two postdocs, after my postdocs, I, I come back to Spain. Two postdocs. Two, <laughs> two postdocs, I come back to Spain. I, I began to make a way from sensing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because of some political reasons, you know, in the, uh, the political reasons in the in the departments, I could not follow what I learned in, in Japan, so I have to quit somehow all that research. And as I knew how to fabricate micro lenses for optical communications, I began to fabricate micro lenses for Shaq Harman sensors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that time, uh, with some colleagues in the universe in, in my department, uh, in the beginning we were more towards astronomical mm -hmm. uh, applications for, for telescopes. So that's what I did. And slowly we were into vision, you know, because there is also like a parallel uh, yeah. research in astronomy and, and in visual vision, optics, yeah. especially all aberrations related with the eye because they change of time, you can correct with the Harman sensor and all these things. So we went more to visual optics and now nowadays I'm just working in visual optics. Right. So you so you you were able to over time kind of get towards that medical medical application. Finally. Yeah. Finally I got it. And and <laughs> so so this is great background. I was reading one of your papers like I mentioned with Dr. Mahajan mm -hmm. and um and the math was spectacular to to say briefly. So the background in theoretical physics <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um so uh what specifically is your research on now? I mean, it, it applies to human vision, but um, but kind of what do you do with that? We have in this moment several lines of action. So one of them is uh, wavefront coding. We can speak later about yeah, it, yeah. but wavefront coding we are using in two lines. One is using in uh, ophthalmoscopes or iPhone cameras in order to... Uh, see details in retina uh, without adaptive optics, mm -hmm. without adaptive right. optics. So this part is like in instrumentation. Mm -hmm. At the very same time, with a slightly different design of uh, wavefront coding optics, uh, we are using it to, to design intraocular lenses or contact lenses for pres presbyopia. Okay. For presbyopia. And also we have another line, and the, the third leg <laughs> right, right. is like image processing um, for retinal image mm -hmm. when there are cataracts. Okay, there is I, yeah. cataracts. Right, right, and I and okay, so I, I'm really interested in that. But we should start with wavefront <laughs> coding, and and almost even going back before that, just for people not in you know visual optics or testing um, so my background's in uh, astronomical mirrors and optics and like you said you know for adaptive optics um, for people that see these big telescopes especially from the ground it, the atmosphere is really turbulent and, and so we do all sorts of things um, to, to kind of morph the mirror and we correct aberrations but from my perspective outside of adaptive optics, it's pretty slow. You measure the aberrations and you correct for them in some way. Um, so it, it, 
how does that how does that translate to visual optics? I, I know obviously I know the eye is a visual system, but but are they like very similar aberrations that we're seeing? No, they are different. They're different. But, but you you mean in the beginning? Yeah. You begin with uh, adaptive optics. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the principle is the same in atmosphere. I mean, yeah. You have your yeah, tur it's, it's, atmospheric turbulence, right. with the size of eddy or whatever you have, that uh, it's making that the image of star, a planet, whatever you, you want to, to look at, it's all the time affected by aberrations, mm -hmm. high order aberrations. And of course, the telescope, as it's moving and so Right, on. right. But and anyway, like thermal changes and right. thermal changes and gravity, whatever. So it's changing, the aberration is changing. So uh, here is where adaptive optics begins. Yeah, so it yeah. begins with Militar. Uh, it's big. I mean, the first one, I think, mm -hmm. more or less, if you look at the history of adaptive optics, the one who, I mean, the one who wants to know what satellite is, is there, or right, if right. you aim or you don't aim, or looking from up, if you aim or you don't aim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they, they really have something. Mm -hmm. But there is a moment that scientists, sooner or later, everybody arrives to some results. So, uh, well, it's when uh, adaptive optics is discovered. In okay. The, in the beginning, it goes slow, you right. know, because of technology. And uh, because you need a, a mirror or a system that corrects aberration real time. Yep. But real time means that within the change yeah, of yeah, yeah. the aberration time, uh, you need a mirror and you need a computer. Right. And of course, this is the, all the mechanics. So uh, years ago, I don't know if it applies now, but when it was the boom of adaptive optics in, in atmosphere, there was a semi you If you want precision, accuracy, a, a fast system and a cheap system, you only can have two. Right, okay. So <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you only can have two. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna so, you choose which ones you, you're. So you you choose time or you yeah, choose yeah. this. It depends on what you have. So when astronomers was were doing this, then the moment people working in visual optics say, "Hey, the eye is something very similar. The, the statistics are different mm -hmm. of the changing of aberrations and aberrations are not the same, but." But they change yeah, in time. Yeah. Similar concept. The similar concept. They change because the eye lens is all the time trying mm -hmm. to accommodate because of your lungs, you are yeah, breathing. Yeah. So everything is moving there. And, and so with time, the aberrations are changing. And if you want to look at tiny details of retina, tiny. Yeah. For big details, it's not important. You know, the retinoscopes are yeah, working. Yeah. If you want to look for the receptors or something like that, that's tiny aberrations. They they did not allow you to to, to see it. To see it just correcting astigmatism. Yeah, focus. yeah. So, so why why would I want to see those details? That because I mean, the photoreceptors. Uh, because of two reasons. First, the photoreceptors they are the pixels of mm. your of your eye. So and knowing how how they work, so you 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 can get better things in yeah, Google, yeah, yeah, things yeah. of course correcting a lot of things like thinking pilots, like thinking people who is focusing and they want to know tiny tiny yeah, details. Yeah. If you are able to correct that aberrations, in in principle you could get let's say supervision. So, yeah, so that yeah, was yeah. A, in the beginning more or less the idea, but also to study all the photoreceptors that they are part of brain. It's not eye, it's brain. Right. So, and see how there's the connection, how they react to color, a lot of things. But it was difficult to, yeah. to reach that part of, of retina or several layers of, right. layers of retina. And here is where adaptive optics arrive. And the first laboratory they got it, it was in Rochester with Professor mm. Williams. Okay. Yeah. So they did it. And it was like this table. It was yeah, something yeah. huge. Yeah. <laughs> and the big computers, you know, with the big bottom. Right, the right, screens right. Yeah. And everything. Just what you want to sit in. Just what you want to put your eye in front of. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, you have to be with the open eye and yeah. fighting not to move well. But anyway, uh, it works. This, it works. Yeah. And now there are adaptive optics, retinoscope, yeah. smaller compact, they, they can study this kind of thing. So this this is more or less how different fields they are. Yeah, they are how connected. it kind of, okay. And this is more or less the idea of adaptive 
optics. Now the computers are quite quite yeah. fast and quite cheap. Right. So now you can have all three. I you assume. can, yeah, practically okay. all okay. three. Yeah. Um, so how? So so you mentioned wavefront coding at the beginning, and this was a term. Again, I, I come from astronomical telescopes and metrology, and maybe I was just a bad student, but I was not familiar with this term. So, so what does it entail? Yeah, wavefront coding. It's a very interesting technique because you know in optics. What you don't want is aberrations. You don't want aberration in your optics. You don't want aberration in your eye. You don't want aberration in your atmosphere. Right. So um, aberrations are a problem. And again, the first ones were the military. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you have a missile, and the missile is running, so yeah. wherever the missile goes, it has some optics yeah. to, to aim. But the missile goes very fast and it hits, it gets mm -hmm. hot. And shakes. And, right, and, and, and shakes, but shaking is not that problem. The problem is mainly the dilatation, dilation, the, yeah, yeah. The dilation, dilation, yeah, yeah, yeah. the dilation of the different parts of of the optical system. Mm -hmm. First, the optical system has to be cheap because it's going to be destroyed, right, with right. the with the missile or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, but the, but the other thing is that um, if if the the components, I mean, the lens. The lenses, the holders, they, they they cannot be made in the same material, so they have yeah. different materials. Of course, they choose the proper materials. It's material science. Right. They are everywhere. Right. But nonetheless, can, it'll it'll the deform. The dilation and, yeah, is different. Yeah. So what happened that at the very end your lens becomes so I don't remember if myopic or hyperopic, but yeah. some defocus problem. Yeah, so yeah. they don't see well. Which so, is not good. Which is missile, not good. Right? Especially <laughs> <it's> <laughs> for a missile. Right. It's not good. So what What's wavefront coding doing? That's a beautiful thing because it's, you have to put a lot of aberrations in the system. Just the opposite, you think. Mm -hmm. If you put aberrations in the system, not any aberration, it has a specific aberration, mm -hmm. but you put a lot. So it's not half a wavelength. I mean, it's right. maybe 10 wavelengths or something like big aberrations. But what you get with these aberrations is that the PSF, the point is fraction, or the MTF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to the MTF because it's the same. It's a Fourier transform. The MTF, it's invariant mm -hmm. under uh, the focus. Mm -hmm. Right. First. Right. And second, in the if the aberrations you put in the system make the MTF not having zeros. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It means you can divide by it. Right. If you right. can divide, you can get the image. Yeah. Because okay. the PSF is going to be independent or where, I mean, if this is your recording plane, it doesn't matter Yeah. yeah where yeah. the image around the plane is going to be focused. Right. So the only thing, the only thing you have to do is the convolution. But the convolution depends on that aberrations. So right. the matrix for the convolution and a given application it's always the same. So it's a story in the system. The system does not have to calculate it. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a division of numbers that can be very fast. Huh. And so it's a hybrid, hybrid, yeah, 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 hybrid yeah. process. So you have the optics and you have the computing thing, but it can be in chip. Yeah. So uh, this is the important thing of aberrations that you say, oh, aberrations, that's awful. But at the very end, they, in some applications, they are not so awful. And this is what happened in in wavefront coding that you can yeah. revert the problem. So you put, I mean, the, what they call the intermediate image, that right. is the image with the, the focus plus the, it, yeah. this aberration. It, it's awful. I mean, it's very blurry, but there's going to be a deconvolution process. Do you put that anywhere? Hmm? Do you do you put that intermediate image anywhere? Or does you it put it in the, in the exit pupil. Exit pupil. The, the, this aberration is a plate. Yeah, or, okay. Or even you can, you can simplify the system by uh, shaping your lens with this aberration. Sure. Okay. One sure, of your sure. lenses, several of your lenses, depends on the system. Yeah. But you're introducing that that aberrated wavefront on yeah. top of your yeah. Okay. Top, okay. So you design your yeah yeah, and it's a fixed thing. And it's it, it, it's fixed. So so you're saying this it's it's like a physical yeah. 
thing that you're putting in. Yeah. Okay. It's a okay. physical thing. Okay. It's a physical thing that you can. I, I can tell you, you can shape. Yeah. In your lens. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just like adding surfaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's like the the zoom of both surfa- surfaces. So you put in your lens. You can put in your holder. But if the lens is shrink by shrunk yeah. by by the optics or doesn't matter. I mean, it's going to the focus, the yeah. system, but it it's going to be post-processed. Right, right, right. And you can do it in real time, so real time that it can go in a mic, in right. a And then it had a lot of applications. It had a lot of applications in many, many. Uh, for instance, uh, iris detection. You know, when you want to detect the details of iris for eye recognition. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's important because you don't have to say the, the person who put the eyes just exactly in, yeah, 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 in yeah. that place so you can be a little bit more relaxed here, there. So f- that's, it, that's one of the applications. Another application is for sur- surveillance cameras so you don't have to tell the thief, okay, hey, come here, I want to recognize yeah, your face. because you're like so invariant of that. It's, it's giving you a big depth of field. Okay, okay. Without reducing the aperture. Right, right. So that's the, the thing. So, um, so what uh, what aberrations do do you use? Because you know, when I first heard about it, the the first thing that jumped to mind are you said use defocus, mm-hmm. and maybe like you know, if I thought about it, I'd say some Zernike terms, mm-hmm. and of course you would choose the right ones. Um, but but you guys did something really cool with the Jacoby Fourier mask. Yeah. Um, so can you just kind of explain? Yeah. What terms and, and kind of why Jacobi Fourier? The the first mark, the first let's say plate or mask we call mask also with aberrations that uh, Dosky and Kathy we have to to say who, who did okay, it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that they introduce it's a cubic mm-hmm. uh, x cube plus yeah, yeah. y cube. Okay. So it's going to to provide a. Um, PSF, like L-shaped, yeah. invariant, yeah. L-shaped, and not zeros. And and this is the first. And you cannot play much more, yeah. much more around the cubic. Right, right. So when, when was this, by the way? Sorry. <sighs> oh, my God. I, you got me, I think, 70s? I, so, I it so, been, so, so a bit ago, though. Yeah, it's I, it's a bit of a okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. The reason but, I ask, but I don't want. I, I, we can I can look up the paper and, yeah. and kind of yeah, and I'll put it in the notes. Yeah. But I I don't know. I love that idea in optics that there's a lot of things maybe that 80, no, not seventies, maybe eighties, seventies, eighties. Sure, yeah. There's a lot of things though that the original thing was like a while back, and, and you know we're still perfecting it, which mm-hmm. I don't know. I always kind of enjoy. But anyway, so sorry I interrupted. Well, you. I think there is a cycle. Yeah. Sometimes some things look at make a freeform shape in a yeah. transparent plate or whatever the material is is not easy. Right, right. It's right. not easy, and it can be very expensive. So uh, sometimes uh, something is forgotten there with some specific applications that it's working, but maybe it's expensive. Mm-hmm. But the era of plastics. Uh, arrive and the era of reforming many different ways of fabrication arrive that they make that you can ask a company do this and you give a formula they do it yeah, yeah for yeah. you not very expensive yeah, not, yeah. Not comparatively really expensive. Like, so it way from coding it come back again yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come back again but it's the same with with Harman yeah uh, the the idea of Harman it you re- I don't know if you remember the first Harman, not Jack Harman. Right, the right, first right. Harman screen that it was like a huge yeah. tape uh, round good with with holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just just big holes. Big right? holes yeah, and yeah, then yeah. the projection where you right, 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 yeah. put your pencil. Yeah. So then uh, Professor Jack, that's from this university, he put the lenses. Yeah. You know, and then you wanted to make it smaller. Right. And then micro lenses appear, and but micro lenses. They appear because optical communications needed tiny lenses. Yeah. So because of optical communication, the, the Shaq Harman different areas is, are kind of so yeah. it's like everything is related. Yeah, 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 yeah. like that. So uh, I lost. Oh, oh, so 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 yeah, I I, I distracted you, but um, so they originally used the, the, ah, the cubic the function. cubic the okay. cubic function. 
the cubic function works very well, but uh, in the image you can observe some artifacts. There are artifacts. And it has some, depending on the uh, peak to valley mm. of the aberration, you can have more or less, uh, more or less depth of field. Mm -hmm. Okay. The biggest the depth of field, uh, you have to be careful with the signal to noise, ra noise ratio, because you get an invariant PS MTF, yeah, invariant yeah. MTF, but the invariant you get because it drops very fast. Yeah. And you say it drops, what happened? Nothing, because yeah. you are going yeah, to yeah. post-process it. But when it is in, in the tail, yeah, you're not close getting to the right, axis, right, right, right. depending where the noise yeah. is. Okay. So uh, this was the original one. The next one that reduce artifacts is what is known in in literature for Cernike the polynomials like the trifoil or trifoil. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a cubic too. Okay. It's a cubic, but it goes three times. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Three times. So the PSF is not going to be just like this. Uh, it's, it's going to be like like a like a spike. Yeah. You know, like a spike, but then you are going to have like the like the three three legs. And we have so yeah, so you, you so have I have your your paper. Oh yeah. And I'll be sure to put these pictures up oh. in the video so people can see them mm -hmm. and, and reference the mm -hmm. paper. But but yeah, it's it's kind of. Yeah. I don't know how to draw it, but yeah, kind of three spikes coming up. Three off. spikes, something something like that. The the face is easy. The face is easy. It's three mountains and three valleys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So okay. that's, that's why the three foil. Yeah. And uh, this one, just only having this symmetry that goes in, say, in radial or polar coordinates with cosine mm. of three times the angle. Yeah. Uh, with cosine three times the angle, the artifacts are minimized. Mm -hmm. Are minimized, and then you have the R cube term. Yeah. So we work with that sometime, and we make simulations, and even we we have some of them implemented for looking at the at the retina, mm -hmm. and it works. But we we say okay, let's try to improve it a little bit because of the signal to noise ratio. So what we were working was with the power, the power. And then with the power, the polynomial, the Jacobi polynomials yeah. appear. Yeah. So it's change a little bit the power. So make it n not one by one. Yeah. Make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. So it can be one three instead of three three point five. That is some poly Jacobi polynomials goes in half. Yeah. In yeah. halves. So with that we make all the study, and and we realize that depending on the power, I mean there is a sort of compromise. Yeah. So it's a balance. Noise. Accuracy, depth of feel, what you want. But right. depending on the application, you can get better results than just going up yeah. with the power, but keeping the same the, the, the same angular uh -huh. uh, dependence. Huh. Okay. If you put two times theta, that's uh -huh. astigmatism. Mm -hmm. And astigmatism goes from one focal line to other focal line. So there is not really invariance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can use maybe four theta or you can use five theta. That's also okay, it goes many yeah. times. So you have to, but the trifoil or four theta works very well. When the moment you have many, many loops, you lose. You, lose you do, them. it goes, it declines. Yeah. Okay. And and there is something, I mean, cosine of three theta, this kind of star yeah. PSF is much more similar to something with rotational symmetry than an L. Yeah, 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 right. So that's why it's working a little bit better. Hmm. And, and so, the the Jacobi Fourier mask that you use, mm -hmm. it has in particular like application to visual optics. Mm -hmm. um, what what's the application that benefits more from that? I guess like what like what what is that trade off? Okay, so now we go in two lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first line is that we are developing is in iPhone cameras. Uh -huh. Okay, when you want to go to detail. What I told you, there are aberrations, not only the focus, yeah. but people has astigmatism and people has high order aberrations. Yeah. High yeah. order aberrations. So the first thing we realize is that the wavefront coding, uh, even with the trifoil, 
or or the cubic, pure cubic lens. It works also is invariant for astigmatism. It was designed at the beginning for for the focus, but it also it also works for astigmatism. So, uh, it works with astigmatism. So it means that you are going to have a, two elements, legs, to correct your... And for a camera, uh, sorry, for an ophthalmoscope, that you don't need to, to use the wheel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you right. put on a smartphone. So that's our idea to... So when say, you're saying, like, when they switch out, is, yeah. is A better B, you could just put the phone... Yeah, yeah. So you can use a portable... Ophthalmoscope, that's our main uh, uh, research yeah. line now, a portable an ophthalmoscope. And you, we want to put a telephone or smart, yeah. a smartphone with an app. Yeah. And of course, instead of putting your art, you just put the, put the telephone. Yeah, yeah. It's the same. At the very end, this is the same. But you know, ophthalmoscopes, they have a wheel where you correct for the, the focus of both yeah. the, the, the practitioner and, and the, the patient. Use. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here you don't need the practitioner because you have your smart smartphone, but you have the the patient. And are, are are you in the thing that you're projecting on the phone? You're adding those aberrations into it. We are adding at the at, at the exit lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. the smartphone. Yeah, right. Okay. This this plate. Oh, that's great. This plate. That is a plate. I mean, it's yeah. nothing very complicated. So you, you just glue it and try right. to center a little bit. Yeah. So you put it there, and then you put the smartphone, and then you have your you have to do it in the smartphone. Now we are doing a computer, but we yeah, are trying yeah. to develop the, the app. And so you you don't need to correct your astigmatism and all these kind of things. And if in a, if you have a retinoscope or iPhone those camera with higher magnification, where the other aberrations, the high order aberrations are going to be important. And if you want to see details in mm -hmm. the in the in the retina, uh, then these aberrations have have to be corrected. Right, right, right. And this is why people is using Shaq Harman yeah, sensors yeah, yeah. with all the deformable mirrors. But they are quite expensive, much yeah. more than a computer. Uh, so that's what the only right. thing we are doing for making details for uh, observing details in retina. And that's that's not with a smartphone. That's right. with a like the proper with computer, proper computer with, a proper, with a computer or something that you can adapt to a retinoscope and you are watching the, the screen, but the computer is making the real time processing. Is that is the real time processing? Uh, uh, what is that driving? Is that like driving like a? Um, what is it analyzing? Let me phrase it like that. Sorry. What is that? So is the computer analyzing um, the output from the? The, the retina scope? Yeah, the, the, the computer deconvolves mm. a very blurry image because... Which is oh, using that, that Jacobi Fourier yeah, mask. Yeah. Okay, that's, okay. A, that's a Jacobi polynomial. Okay, so, okay. Uh, we can get smaller depending... Yeah, uh, Jacobi, yeah. we, we use depending on the noise and everything, but we are trying to refine the design yeah. in order to put it in the eye and it will not correct because it does not correct. Right. But the MTF will be invariant to the focus, astigmatism, and high order aberration. Okay. Okay. So uh, the the MTF is invariant. Yeah. So in your your computer, the only thing you need to have is a matrix, mm -hmm. which can be done the, fast. The, it's 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 how to say it's. It's in your computer. Yeah, yeah, you don't need yeah. to calculate every right. time. Right. You don't need a deformable mirror and all the mechanics to change in and the communication between the computer and the mirror and right. and everything. So that would be just yeah. something very simple that later can be in a very in cheap. Yeah. You yeah, you yeah. Don't, now we are using computers, right. but but that that's the that's the idea. And we got we got some image, not yet to photoreceptors, but we got image of the, what is called the corocapillar, that is the, uh, when you see the, the retina, usually the retinographs, uh, the, the iPhone, those, yeah. you see, you know, the optical disc and the, right. but if you go to bigger magnification, there is a mesh of very tiny vessels, that's called coro, coro, corocapillars, mm -hmm. and 
there the aberrations are important because with aberrations you cannot see them. So we were able to detect them. So is that is it like a mesh of capillary blood vessels? It's is it's a mesh, uh-huh. and depending well, when you have a mesh, you have holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So depending on the density, for instance, of holes, it's a very, a very simple, some, yeah, very yeah. simple pathology. Depending, it it needs to it needs to have a given density of holes. Yeah. Because if you have a lot, you have a neovascularization. Mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. lot of vessels are being born. Yeah. You don't want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if there are a few, that means that they are dying off dry or, or yeah, dying yeah, yeah. or because of some of yeah, 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 yeah. diabetes or yeah. whatever it is. So that, that, that's not my field. So right, 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 right. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so by counting, then you, what they do, they have some programs to, yeah, to count yeah. this kind of thing. So another another stuff. So if yeah. they are little like little balls, yeah. you can see like little balls means they are aneurysm. So the shape as well, Matt. Shape. Not, so density, so shape. So density, shape, okay. uh, distribution, yeah, where yeah, the yeah, holes yeah. are, because the density is not uniform along the, the retina or the macula right, or right. near the optical disc. So depending where you are, you have a lot right. of properties. But they are, they are study. But just analyzing that, you can... So that's... So we, we, we went a layer inside, yeah. inside the eye with, with this wavefront coding. We, we have image of that. So... And, and, and going forward, it seems um, the next thing that you're working on uh, is basically you don't even need a computer. You can put it on a chip to make yeah. it kind of smaller. Yeah. And I'm assuming as well that as you further optimize this, like you said, you 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 can go a, a step deeper. You're not yeah. imaging the mesh. You're imaging single photoreceptors yeah. or something of that nature. Huh. So that's where we are. Okay. So that's one leg of the way, of the way from coding. Yeah, yeah. And then there is another leg. The other leg is, what if I make a contact lens or an intraocular lens? Everybody makes intraocular lens usually with rotational symmetry. Okay, with, with rotational symmetry. With rotational okay. symmetry. That is more or less what the, what the crystalline lens with the eye lens has, yeah. more or less. Right. And so uh, they want to create depth of field. So that's the idea. When, yeah. you, when you lose the ability of your eye lens to stretch yeah. and accommodate to see in the distance or to, to read, when you lose that, you know, it's when the arms become to be smaller yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So when these things happen, uh, it, and well, this is one problem, this is presbyopia. Mm-hmm. And usually, a little bit later, you get cataract. Right. <laughs> so sooner or later, you get the surgery. So there are a lot of designs, zillions of designs of, of the, the lenses after you take the lens that you put inside. And so you correct the cataract and you give some depth mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. to the to the person that's all they can drive. Because, because the, the, the implanted interocular lens can't accommodate. They kind of accommodate. There were some attempts to make accommodate. Uh, right, where they, yeah, uh, yeah. But generally, it's not going to be like your crystal lens. Yeah. Okay. No. So the, the thing is, if it, there is, you cannot do this, yeah. something that is changing, processing. Mm-hmm. Because I'm looking far away, I process, I change the shape. Right, I'm, right, I'm reading right. here, or I'm looking at in the intermediate distance. So uh, what they do is, Put some aberrations mm-hmm. again. We go to aberrations in the in the lenses to create the depth of field. Okay. So uh, there are very many. One easy, but one easy aberration, you know, is a spherical aberration. Yeah. A spherical aberration can give you some depth of field. So some designs are based in spherical aberration. Some of them they make different zones, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. different uh, like zonal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so. That just like like three three focal or bifocal, so more or less this three focality or two focality at the very end is like a sort of invariant sure, PSF sure. in the middle, and of course you are, are going to have halos mm-hmm. and the contrast decrease. Okay, always yeah yeah always, but after having cataracts you are not that picky yeah. and people does not realize and there is a lot of eyes that they process. Right. So well, right. But the 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 patient's going from 
it's really hard to see too. Oh, yeah. it's an improvement period. Yeah, it's an improvement, yeah. and also, and also, there, there. Remember that the retina is part of the brain. Yeah, yeah. So the retina or the brain can process. Yeah. So that's why we thought, what about yeah. not making symmetric the lenses and design lenses with more or less the idea of away from coding, of yeah. course, adapted right, with right, the right. proper Jacobi polynomial, with the proper, pro, pro, proper um, how to say, with the proper angular and radial dependence for an eye is different than, yeah. than another application. And what happened? So first we made, we made simulations. And the simulation seems that the eye, the, the eye has a, what is called a n neural, neural function, a neural filter, mm -hmm. and the neural filter is able to process. So at the very end, it's it's making the, the convolution, if not completely, it, close it, enough. So, yeah, close enough. Close and it, enough. and do you, do you see that the patient adapts to this? Or, or like, like, let me let me ask it differently. Is there a period of adaptation, or do you implant it and they open their eye and they're they're good? Well, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, this is not my words. These are a colleague of mine. Mm -hmm. Okay, that I make myself. Yeah. <laughs> this very moment. But they, they are the the thing is. Uh, any lens you put in the eyes, in the eye, in the moment you have to remove the eye lens because of whatever, because you have cataracts or break or whatever, yeah. you put it there, uh, it's correcting. I mean, you can give some depth for presbyopia. Uh, and at the same time, usually they correct the astigmatism, they correct even if you, ha if you, ha you are myopic or hyperopic. So they correct that. Okay? So they put the lens inside. Also, let's suppose that nothing happens to your lens, but for whatever reason, you are myopic or you are hyperopic, you have astigmatism. So you use the contact lenses. Yeah, yeah. So you know that people do not adapt to contact lenses. So they are trying and trying different kind of things, yeah. all this kind. And the, graduate, the, the prescription is the same because you can, it's not a matter I put more prescription or less prescription. No, no, the prescription, it's what it is. But they... The way that they correct yeah, yeah. and everything. So they, some people they do not adapt. So the question is why they do adapt to the intraocular lenses quite well, and they do not adapt to the contact lenses, or it takes time to adapt to the contact lenses it's because they cannot take it out. They don't have an option. <laughs> so you don't have any other option. Yeah, yeah. Or you adapt, or you adapt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? There are persons that they are very picky. The eye is very picky. Yeah, yeah. And they, even with the intraocular lens or the contact lens, they detect very tiny. For instance, you just miss a little bit of 0 0.12 in, a, in the focus, diopter in the focus, and they do not adapt. They feel it. They are not able to process. So depending on the picky you are, you are going, if you're not very picky, you are going to see well, you are going to see details, you're going to go, you're going to drive, you're going to read. Yeah, that's fine. It's and no that problem. depends on how your eye and your brain process the things. But of course, if you cannot take it out sooner or later, you have to adapt it. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you know that people who work in optics, you work in optics. So when you, you have these telephones and you look at a selfie, I say, oh my God, don't put me in the corner because the spheric calibration yeah, 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 yeah. might make my face a little bit bigger or whatever. Most of people don't realize. Yeah. Don't realize. So, and sometimes you can see chromatic yep. uh, in some lenses or, uh, um, and it's because you are used to. Yeah. And in the moment you are used to and you know what happened, you are, <laughs> and that depends also in, in usual life. Some persons are very picking what yeah, they see. Yeah, yeah. But if, you know, I mean, in the center of the Gaussian, the yeah. center of the Gaussian, sooner or later they arrive. Yeah. And they it's very fast. You know, it, it reminds me of kind of the early, early endeavors towards LASIK surgery when they did the um, radial... Uh, the the radial keratomy. Ker ke radio, oh. I always forget it. Sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have I said know it. What you're, no, I know what you're speaking about. And Keratometry? Ke I know in Spanish, and now I cannot say in English. What's it in Spanish? Keratometria radial, no? Yeah, so yeah, yeah okay, so yeah, so radial yeah. keratometry. Yeah. Then. 
Something, um, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Um, yeah. But but for for people listening, you know, they they would make an incision and make radial scars, scars on your eye. Some people liked it because it kept proceeding and eventually it, it led to developing LASIK. But you have to imagine, like you were saying earlier, you get huge, you know, blooms of stray light and yeah. diffraction, yeah. and but you adapt, I guess. So. Adapt. Adapt. Finally, the the brain dis- discard everything. Yeah, yeah. And and I tell you, I mean, if you work in optics or you are very picky, I mean, with everybody in my laboratory that certain age yeah, that yeah. we have to change our lenses yeah yeah in the night especially in the night for us it's a nightmare mm-hmm. because we see chromatic yeah. we see the spherical aberration we detect the spherical aberration and we are not happy with it. during the day it's okay right. but during during the night with you have a big pupil so all these defects appear even for me in my case i can see the i can see the rim of the lens really the, really really and I, not always. Yeah. So sometimes I, you know, it's like something happens. Mm, yeah, here, you can, here yeah, it yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Yeah. So, and everybody who, I remember a, a student of us, a PhD student, that he had a problem with the contact lens. Mm-hmm. He, he came and say, in the night, when there are lights, there are icy fringes. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, I see that people say, I see fringes. <laughs> And such fringes. So they make the topography for the, the contact lens. He was using contact lens. Nothing was visible. And then we make interferometry of the, yeah. of the lens. And there was a very, very tiny bubble. So tiny that you cannot see the bubble. You cannot see the bubble. Yeah. But it creates diffraction. Yeah. yeah and yeah. because of diffraction, some sort of interference. So, and he knew where it was it. So it must be something here, you know, that she had a, he had a thing that is so smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we look there and it was a very tiny bubble, not visible, of course, not in topography, but not even with the Jack Harman, where they measure, not because it's a bubble. So they, they couldn't, they couldn't see an interferometry, you know, these tiny deficits pop, pop up and say, here is your bubble. But it was a bubble of yeah, tiny, less tiny. than a fraction of microns. We were used to see fringes, so yeah. you see fringes everywhere. Yeah, right? yeah. So this is this is the thing, but for average, so all the things are made for the average, for the center yeah. of the Gaussian, yeah. for the ninety percent of the persons, they they get used to it. So 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 the application of, of wavefront coding in the the topic we just covered, um, you can make an interocular lens that's not yeah. rotationally symmetric, yeah, and it provides you better depth of focus. Is there any yeah. other benefit? The benefit is that it's very, it has a lot of tolerance to manufacturing. Mm-hmm. So you can confuse a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's going to give you still the, the depth of focus to tilts. Okay. To, so we, we, were, we were in the process of all these simulations, but it works. Not for a lens. Right. Not for a right. lens. It has okay, to be because the lens is moving. Right. It has to be intraocular or even. Um, Maybe contact. We don't know what's going to happen with the small rotations. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, I mean, in the moment the PSF is there, the brain is saying, okay, this is my PSF. I'm going to process it. So yeah. I'm going to deconvolve somehow. If the PSF is changing. How, depend- how fast is so that? Yeah. For intraocular, it's, it's working. Mm-hmm. But I, I can tell you that the we had a plate. I think Jim Sviberlin, Professor Sviberlin made it for us and we were using the, the idea of making for the eye was this kind of serendipity mm. you know we were focusing in instrumentation so with this with was it this, an alvarez lens hmm? was it an alvarez no, no, lens? it was a trifoil okay okay it was a trifoil okay. lens. he he made it here okay so that's why we, we were yeah, working yeah. together in in these designs so he made a trifoil uh, for for the retinoscope yeah yeah and I had it in my in my desk, yeah. you know. And in a moment, I, I was very myopic at that time. Now I have the lenses, but the intraocular lenses. But at that time, I was very myopic a couple of years ago. And you know, I took it, removed my glasses. With my glasses, I cannot see till yeah, yeah, this yeah. position. And I put it like this. Yeah. And say, oh my god, I'm looking. 
in the distance. And then I look like that. Of course, you have to. Yeah, to move right, 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 right. Because, right. you know, but it, and yeah, it yeah. was like moving. <laughs> but I said, and I can read. And it was not specifically designed. And yeah. It was the very yeah, first yeah, yeah. time, and I am very picky. Yeah. But you know, I say, I can't. I mean, if you move it, you lose it. But in the moment it's centered, did you do just like this? So my God, it's working. It works. It, it works. So, so that you, was how, that was the motivation. That was, that was the, the serendipity, you yeah. know, that all your life yeah, take yeah. you to this, to that line that we are exploding yeah. now because we were in instrumentation. Right. And image processing and, all, and also some part with, away from, with, away from, away from sensing. Yeah. yeah this yeah. kind of. So that was the begins. Huh. Was, just and, like, and so what are the next steps for your research? I guess kind of where where are you at? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Now we are in the process of patent the the lens and then the fight with some company that wants to, to buy the yeah. patent. This is for, for the intraocular lens. Yeah. For the the image processing with cataracts, we are pretty advanced. So we have now a Let's say it's an old software for improvement, but now we have a better one. Uh, uh, improvement of software for looking at retina when you have cataracts. Uh, I think in general it will be online. The software. The software. Online free, I mean, you download it and you install in your in your computer. The executable, you say executable? How do you say uh, executable. Executable. Yeah, yeah. Executable problem. But we want to do it online mm-hmm. in such a way that you, if you have a Wi-Fi, you can use your Apple yeah, tablet yeah, yeah. or your phone or whatever you yeah. are not. So it's not just Windows on, or whatever. Just yeah, not yeah. Windows okay. or whatever. So this is the the second thing uh, with these cataracts. And the third one is to implement it in the smartphones that they are being coupled to a handheld, to a hand uh, ophthalmoscopes mm. Be- and do the app in such a way that it will process in real time. That the convolution is done in real time, in real time. Because first it's going, sometimes when there, there are cataracts, they cannot find a disc. Mm-hmm. There is no focusing with cataracts. There is no. In fact, there is a depth yeah. of field, but you can focus a little better. You can go to the disc. You can we, because you're, you are you're, and you're saying when you're observing the retina. The so, retina. The, so the outside yeah. observer yeah. looking at the yeah. retina. Okay. Yeah. Or if you do it with normal optics, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you you take the photograph. Now it's only the from the photographs from the pictures. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you put it in the in the computer and process and give you the. You have to choose. Yeah, so a couple yeah. of parameters. And just in order to tell you how things are interconnected, we are using a kernel based in the atmospheric kernel for fog <laughs> or yeah. rain yeah, yeah, yeah. or these kind of things that right. it, it's Similar. related with what we did when we were working in atmospheric optics. That's for making the convolution yeah. of the image of the blur, that is because of, of fog, not because of the aberration, but because of fog. So instead of the freed radios, yeah. you have any other things. You have a density function of yeah, the cataract yeah. or whatever, the accumulation of things or the scratches your cornea has. Or Wow. So everything is self yeah, yeah, the yeah. fields connect. Ties together. So, okay, so let me, let me try to summarize this and I'm going to partly describe uh, kind of what it looks like when I go to the eye doctor, and and hopefully you can tell me how that might change, um, and maybe not for me, but for other people in particular. But from what you've described, you know, typically I go to the eye doctor. Um, I am a glaucoma suspect, so I I have the you know the, the big imaging device, and they look at the cupping, and they look at the vascularization. Mm-hmm. And the eye doctor spends a long time looking at it. Then you really have to get your eye positioned just right. Mm-hmm. And you have to push just right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they check your vision. And the, the doctor spends some time. And they, they're they looking through this device in A or B, P or A. Um, and at the end of it, you know, I'll get a new pair of glasses or a new pair of contacts. Um, and they'll work, work pretty, pretty well. And eventually when I'm 40 or 50, especially in Tucson in the desert, 
50, um, I'm going to get cataracts. I won't be able to, my, my, uh, my interocular lens won't be able to adapt. Uh, I won't, I won't be able to focus at, at yeah, a wide. Presbyopia. Yeah. Presbyopia. Yeah. And at much less, I'm going to get cataracts and it'll get milky and, and I'll have a hard time mm-hmm. seeing. Um, but that's okay because I'll get surgery and, uh, you know, I can go to the eye doctor anyways and they'll be careful and see what's wrong with my eye and I'll get mm-hmm. surgery and get a new interocular lens. So just, and I, I mean, I can think of this, I can think of so many applications, but it sounds like what you were saying is um, with wavefront coding, one of the applications, one of the first things is you don't need the eye doctor on the other side looking through this, correcting for themselves. It You know, the, the wavefront coding allows for more accurate um, imaging of finer details of the eye mm-hmm. um, in terms of, in some applications, mm-hmm. in terms of um, an interocular lens, you might be able to provide something with greater depth of field. Uh, and I'm really interested with the cell phone application because that sounds small and, yeah. and easy to carry. That's it, different from yeah. these big, big devices, yeah. right? So, the, I mean, for details, you need, so far, you need a big. Definitely, a big definitely. Thing because you need the magnification to look at the details. But look at the usually iPhone. Does. You are telling me that your initial glaucoma or something. Mm, yeah, glaucoma yeah. is affecting your retina. Mm-hmm. So you have to see how the vessels are behaving or they are developing with the drops they yeah, give you yeah. or the medicines you are using for that. So you, you need to do that. Uh, in order to see these vessels, uh, you don't need a... It's not super resolution. No, it's, you don't but, need right. a big thing. So with this hand uh, handy mm-hmm. uh, retinoscope, you can see quite well. And so what happens if you begin with cataracts? begin with cataracts and they don't see well your retina. There's a moment they don't see well your retina. If the cataract advances quite fast or because of something happening in your eye and, you're, you're, and you cannot see through fog, yeah, yeah. Uh, forgetting aesthetical things because you know it's a milky thing there, but forgetting the aesthetical part, what happened if you became blind in your retina, because your blood vessels are very affected by glaucoma or whatever yeah, yeah. thing you have, what is the to put in risk? Every surgery has a little bit of risk, so you put a lens, and finally you are not going to, mm-hmm. to see. So this is one of the applications. Here in the first world, it doesn't matter, but in the third world, it's very important because you probably are going to be every six months or yeah, yeah, and. Uh, you're not going to get cataracts or they are going to tell you we go right now. Yeah. But in yeah, other you're places... Just, you're just starting to get a cataract. We'll get you yeah. in. Yeah. So in other places, you don't know how, how the retina yeah. is because people has cataracts from right. time. So uh, we can get some detail details. Depends on the cataract. Of course, you know, they go from mild to severe to hyper yeah, <laughs> severe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in some cases, if you can look at some vessels, yeah. the, the shape of the big vessels, not the tiny ones, the, the big vessels, knowing the shape, if you can see more or less how they enter into this, you know if that person is going to be yeah, yeah. blind or not, right. independent of if you put that. So that's our idea to make something cheap, portable, that everybody can use. Uh, an ophthalmologist they can see through fog. Yeah, they really yeah. can see because they are very trained persons. But maybe in a, I don't know how to say in, in English, but you know, if you have a medical center where there is a practitioner that he's, he knows a little bit of everything, but he's not an ophthalmologist through cataracts, maybe he is not able to see details yeah. in that vessels or whatever happened in the retina that they are related with some diseases, even like diabetes, is detected yeah, yeah. before in the eye that in the in the yeah. in the blood, or something is happening in the eye, and so maybe it cannot detect the microaneurysm or whatever happened there, or distinguish if it is this pathology or this pathology. With this thing, the image will be clear. Mm-hmm. This image processing will be clear. This is with the image processing in the device or in yeah, the device. Yeah. 
On the other hand, with wavefront coding, you you can get good image with a small, of, not very yeah, good of yeah. of the, of, the, of thalmoscope mm -hmm. uh, without using mo mobile parts can be very cheap, very robust that you can take anywhere. Yeah. The mobile phone is the is yeah. the, the thing that if you are connected to Wi-Fi, you can send the image to right to have processing they or have processing. An analyzation. No, or or if you get an image, you can send it yeah, yeah. somewhere. So more or less, we are to this robust small device, cheap that they can give you information for cataracts. Yeah. Or correcting well, cataracts is one thing, but with all this image processing, yeah. The idea, the final idea, is in a moment we get a good uh, with wavefront coding for small details or. Uh, for cataracts, if you are able to process the image, uh, and then apply an algorithms of artificial intelligence for mm -hmm. detection. So it is a step yeah, that yeah, yeah. you give the pre-processed image. The image has already some good contrast yeah. to for image processing, looking for aneurysm or this kind of, I don't know, drusen or whatever yeah, happened yeah, yeah. there. It will look, it will find. Right. But not with cataracts. So, so this is this yeah. is our goal long term. Hmm. To to get kind of provide yeah. clean, clean clean data, I guess, yeah. so to speak. So. And related with the intraocular lenses. Yeah. The intraocular lenses that it will be, let's say, quite universal. There is now a, uh, this thing of cust customize yeah. lenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just the opposite. It's yeah. Completely uncustomized. Right. It can be used. For, <laughs> for a lot of people, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter your astigmatism or you maybe even uh, you were a, a great myopic person. That's okay, but within the normal Gaussian defects <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. they they have, so they you only need to fabricate one lens. So this is what we are right, trying right. now. Huh. Even even for dogs, for for dogs, dogs. Yeah. Well, now <sighs> dogs are getting cataract surgery. Really, really, dogs and cats, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, but and they are not as much picky as we are. Right, 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 as right. As much right. picky as we are, so you don't need to. I mean, you know, big dog. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Something and a small dog has uh, well, not not much difference. But yeah, they can have defects, and then the only thing is they get cataracts. You take it and you put one lens that it will be good for most. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. Them. Wow, and they will see in the distance and hmm. close. So, so uh, just to kind of turn course a little bit, I, we're, we're getting close to, to taking up the full hour and I don't want to take up too much of your, your time, but um, for somebody that's not in the field uh, that, that's considering it, why should they Why should they go into visual optics? What I mean, you have me convinced, but, <laughs> but what's your kind of sure reason for why visual optics and medical applications specifically, I guess, why is that so compelling? Well, I think visual optics is a application that you get very satisfying results. A person that cannot see yeah. anything or hardly see, and you get some improvement. Some improvement. I'm not even saying that some improvement. That's yeah. That's important. Yeah. I'm speaking about the intraocular lenses, for right. instance, right, or, right. or contact lenses. If you have any defect. Uh, what happened? I mean, if you are in a country where you can have not access, photoreceptors are important so far to understand how vision is working. This is developing research. But for instance, all these coral capillars, you need OCTs. We can get some image very close to not what OCT make a lot of things. Okay, but some some. Uh, output of the OCT, we can get that, mm -hmm. that is going to give a very good information on how the vascularization in, re in retina is, is doing, and it can give a diagnostic, not yeah. only what's going to happen with your vision, but maybe related to other, other, other components issues, your, yeah. other components. So I, I think that any kind of optics that goes through health, yeah. uh, the, the, the output is health applica application in health for me i think it's very important yeah and i like that and you see the the results yeah making a very cheap ophthalmoscope that you go to small 
city yeah. with not much experience in ophthalmology. You take some photographs that they are very difficult if you have some cataracts, but you you take, you measure, and you send it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or intelli- <laughs> artificial yeah. intelligence just give you a percentage of that is going to happen with these persons. Yeah. I think it's important. If you can put lenses to these persons that you don't need to customize because they don't have money, they yeah. don't have all this apparent measure, all this kind of sophisticated thing. That is beautiful optics. Right, too. Right. It's beautiful optics too. So it's different, different. It's it's helping a different area, right? Yeah. And I, I think, you know, a lot of these, a lot of locations where people, the absolute best that you might get in some of these areas is here's discarded eyeglasses. Yeah. I hope it helps a little bit, mm-hmm. right? So if you could replace that with, here's a yeah. thing, it'll help a bunch. Yeah. It is enormous. Um, I yeah, I, I I think that's I think that's amazing. Um, there's one other question I want to ask you, I, particularly going through really any of your papers, but especially that paper with Dr. Mahajan. Um, why should we spend more time learning math? Oh. I, I know that's out of left field, so I, I apologize. No, no, but no, 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 no. I tell you because my my the subject I teach in in my faculty is mathematics. Oh, is it? Is it? Oh. I mean, I give a course, the master courses in optics, but in the graduate students is physics. I'm teaching in physics. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm teaching math, and, and now I'm teaching differential equations, and uh, some years ago I was teaching topology. Mm-hmm. So, oh. okay. So it's very abstract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very abstract math. So math, for two reasons. The first reason that why everybody should study math from they are very small to, of course, if you want to want to be a researcher or whatever you want to be in life. Yeah. The first is logic. Even if the maths are good for nothing, f- goods for nothing, I am sure that uh, the maths you study. You, not you, but the people that study in the in the school. Maybe they they are not going to need it. Yeah, yeah. a lot of I mean, the, the second degree equation. When are they going to be in the real life solving a second degree second degree equation? Right, that right, is nothing. Right. But the way of thinking, the way what represents geometrically, the logic mm-hmm. in math in mathematics, it really changed your brain. The way of thinking, you became more logical. Yeah. So A implies B. Right. B does not imply A. Right. So that's important. Theorem, demonstration. That's that's a very beautiful. For, forget the applications in physics in any field. So just the the beauty of a language of mathematics mm-hmm. that is able to solve a problem. The way of solving the problem is as much important as the solution. Right. Right. Something so simple in mathematics that I tell to my students. Sometimes I give you a problem in real life. Okay. Don't go directly to the problem. First, think a little bit. Yeah. Because if it there is no solution, first maybe it's better to check if there is no solution before spending all the spending time, time yeah, yeah, yeah. looking theories, different yeah. approaches and whatever. So for me that's one of the things. Second, mathematics is the language of physics Mm -hmm. in any field, any field, not optics, any field of physics is the language. If you don't know how to speak physics, you don't know physics. Right. right. So you you can speak uh, in a TV program and speak these persons that for me, I mean, they amaze me because they are able to speak of super strings and optics and these and that. So my idea is... Yeah. Whatever say, do you know how to solve a differential equation just to know that the planets yeah. go in yeah, a yeah, given yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> elliptic shape <laughs> trajectory right. first approach? So you know what I mean. Yeah. So that's important thing for me that the way we have to communicate yeah. with everything right. is mathematics. It this is the mathematics. I, I do think it took me. It took me past differential equations to have that moment of seeing seeing that interweaving, seeing that of like, you know, here's 
here's the phenomenon we're seeing, or like diffraction, here's the phenomenon we're seeing. By the way, here's the math, and it's just, it's perfect. And you, and you, once you kind of click, clue yeah. into that, it's like, oh my God, you know, like you start to appreciate, like you're saying, math yeah. is the language of physics and yeah, it, and it's wonderful. But I do think it, recently within the past couple of years, I started to just for fun, look more at math stuff and, and there's so many like great resources. There's like YouTube now and there's mm-hmm. There's a website, um, Libre Math, which has like free math textbooks mm-hmm. and things. Um, and it, I don't know, I, I don't know what the difference is, but it's so much easier and more fun now than when you're a student. Yeah. When you're a student, you're thinking like, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a differential equation, and and you know, do I have to consider <laughs> this or like what you know, what about boundary conditions? And and it, it feels stressful. And I don't know when you're past it, it's like this is amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. But, but look at something that for me was, I mean, if just you look at this history of science, people began to to count with the fingers, mm-hmm. you know, or like Sumerians that they cut these little bones. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. So that's why there is a system of twelve eggs or six eggs, yeah. and other persons five eggs or ten right, eggs, right, right, depending yeah. on the culture. So this kind of thing. So you begin counting, okay? If counting it's okay for you till 10 or whatever, that's enough, you can live with that. Mm. There are cultures that they have one, two, three, four, many. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they yeah. have a few things. Yeah. They have only two chicken or one goat. Right. Or, so they're not many. I mean, three yeah, chicken yeah. and four chicken are many. Or they yeah, have no difference. Even right. if you have five, five is still many. Yeah. So you don't need more maths. Right. And if they live in common, they don't need to divide or they don't need to have negatives or they, but in a moment you advance a little bit, you need more numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all this, you know, <laughs> uh, what's the name? I, I will say the, it will come to work. Yeah. The, the word, it will come. You know, when, when you construct the real numbers, so that you, this is not the theorem or a definition. I mean, this, this is like this. And yeah. A real number, it is positive or negative, or, or or it is the same number, but it cannot be three things. Right, 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 right. The axioms. Yeah, right, yeah, the, yeah. The ten axioms. So yeah. the axioms were nine, and finally you need the tenth yeah. in order to fill the holes between some rational numbers or yeah. irrational numbers of these kind of things. But you are constructing these maths as you go far and far and far in in technology and we are in the moon and we are in Mars and we can see far away galaxies and we operate with robots and yeah. now intelligent artificial intelligence is going to be there and being helping mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. lot, yeah. a lot, a lot, interpreting what you have to tell them mathematically. Right, right. I yeah. Mean, so this is for me this is very beautiful the yeah. evolution. So I think that in in the school, when we have to teach the, the, the students, I mean, you can make it beautiful, mm-hmm. but there is some part that says, hey, forget if it's beautiful or mm-hmm. not. That way of reasoning is going to help you the rest of your life. Yeah. The rest of your life. If you don't know what's a rational number or an irrational number, it does not matter. Yeah. It does not matter. But thinking how the process is, is a very Beautiful. I mean, it's evolution somehow. Yeah, it's yeah, how yeah, we, yeah, we are yeah. evolving. Yeah. So that's the beauty of maths. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah. yeah. It's my point of view. I'm right, a, right. I'm very enthusiastic when I when I teach mathematics. You know, well, so. that's and what is this this differential good for? I say, I don't care. I right. don't mind. Right. Maybe you will discover when you study quantum mechanics, or maybe you never see this equation again. Yeah. But just play with it. Yeah. Just play. Try to solve it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it has both things. The, the application, the physicists, we always play, we always have an advantage respect to mathematician is that we can put a shape or something when you are solving. A, I mean, you solve a differential equation for a pendulum. Mm-hmm. And the solution has to be a sine or a cosine or something that at least goes and by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It can be maybe the period is not okay, or maybe it goes faster or goes slowly. For a mathematician, if you solve their second degree equation, they can get anything right. <laughs> that goes here, here, and then right. growing. 
it's difficult for them to know if the solution is okay unless they put it in into the equation. an actual yeah. for, for us we have that in us, oh this is the situation yeah. so it yeah. has to be within these limits so we play with some advantage somehow yeah. but in any of the cases of the pure abstract ma- mathematics it's the logic you learn your brain develops a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. And th- that's my point of view yeah. it's, it's not no I yeah I, I love that I, I so um well, you know, I, I don't have any more questions about optics or math or physics. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time You're to talk. Welcome.